All right, so uh, my name is Théo de Gianni. I'm a, I'm a master student at the Un University of Rennes. And today I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about uh, Arculator and how it made it uh, <coughs> easy to run hardware simulation in MLIR. But before I talk about simulation, maybe it's important that I talk about how we model hardware in MLIR. And to do this, we use Circuit. Circuit is a set of dialect and generally an infrastructure uh, to model hardware, like actual circuits in MLIR. And so uh, we use all the MLIR multi-level goodness to apply to it. It's a little bit of a large infrastructure, right? It looks a bit scary, but I'm going to show you a practical example of how it works and you're going to see it's not so bad. So I've made a hardware module, it's a counter. It has um, clock signal inputs and on every clock cycle, it's going to increase the value of the output by one. So how is this done? Well, it's fairly simple. You have a register and then on every clock cycle, you take the output of that register, you add a one to it and you put it back in the register. Fairly simple stuff. So how do you do it in, um, in MLIR? Well, first you define a hardware module, you give it a name, counter here, it has an input, a clock, and then an output O, which is the output data. Then you have an operation that models the register itself. So there are three values here that are important, right? You have the reg output value, which is basically the data output of your register. You have the clock cycle, and then you have the input value. And if you pay attention, this value is not defined yet, but this is hardware. We don't care about dominance. We can just define it later, and that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm defining it now uh, as just the value of the register plus one. And then finally, I output the value of the register. Does this work? I don't know, maybe it doesn't work at all. And it's not that like I can just run it, right? It has like really bizarre uh, data flow. You can't just put it in MLIR CPU runner or something like that. So to, do, to, to actually run it, what you can use is Arculator. Arculator, we run a simulation of this. So to keep it extraordinarily, extraordinarily simple, Arculator is about taking your exotic hardware module with all the circuit dialects inside of it and turning it into a very boring LLVM function that you can run. And so what's nice about Arculator is that it is part of circuit. It knows the, di the circuit dialects, so it, it's very useful. And then, so unfortunately, using Arculator is quite a lot of work because you need, first of all, to use Arculator to generate the LLVMIR that I just talked about, right? But that's just LLVMIR, that's not the simulation output. So now you need to initialize the C++ build system that you will use. Then you need to run Arculator again to generate the internal simulation data. But why would you do this? Well, because you have to use the secret Python script to generate the C++ bindings for your LLVMIR. And then you have to slay the Hydra of Learn using an arrow dipped in its own poison. And then finally, you have to write a C++ driver for your simulation. It's, that's way too much work. I, I don't have time for this, right? Maybe if you're, uh, if, it's a, if it's a full product pipeline, maybe you can do that. But I just want to run my counter. Well, I have great news for you. What if I told you there is a new command in Arculator? <laughs> you can just throw the hardware module at it and it runs. And it runs your simulation, no questions asked. Well, that would be a lie. That would be a lie because you still need a driver, right? It's, if you look at your hardware module, it's, it's cool, but what's the input? How many times do you want to run the simulation? You, you can't know that. So you still need to specify this. And the way to do it is using the argotsim subdialect, which is a, it lets you basically provide the driver alongside the hardware module in MLIR. So let's see how we would do it for this model. We have a funk with funk uh, at the entry point for your driver. I first create the, the constants I will need, uh, which are um, a high clock cycle, a low clock cycle, uh, a high clock value, a low clock value. And then I use the instantiate operation, which is basically going to create an abstract instance of my counter module. And I call it model. Then I set the input of the model using high uh, and say it to be the high value. And then I call the step operation, which is basically going to run the simulation. It's going to propagate the inputs to the outputs. Then I do it again with a low clock cycle to make a, a low clock value to make a full clock cycle. And then I just get the value of the output and print it. Very nice. And now if I take this and my module, combine them together and give it to Arculator, you get the result of the simulation, which is one. Great. So to recap what we have, this is the old flow in Arculator. You normally, like originally, you would just give your model to Arculator. It would generate the LLVMIR and you have to link it to your driver yourself and figure this out. Now with Arculator run, you can also just give the driver alongside the module. It's going to 
uh, load them, combine them together, and execute it using the MLI execution engine. And you just get the result. So I hope I convince you that this is a useful debugging tool. But perhaps we can do slightly more with it, right? Because, OK, we can do that. But one of my favorite use cases for this is that you can make integration tests for hardware super easy. You have your module. You have your driver that you implemented uh, a, a few test cases in. And then you just slap a layer of file check. And there you go. You have an integration test for your hardware. Another nice thing is that you can uh, use Argot Sim as a target, a lowering target. You could have an extended Sim dialect to do to write uh, higher level operations that you want to do on your mod, want to do on your module more easily. You could also have standard interfaces uh, for common hardware patterns that you don't want to write the logic for all the time. You could even have custom front ends if you really want to do this. Why not? Let me elaborate on the standard interfaces thing. Right? If you're testing a CPU core. There's a very common uh, memory interface, which is AXI, which, which lets you uh, specify inputs and outputs for your uh, core uh, that can talk to memory. Because right, the CPU core is nothing without memory. And so it would be really nice if we had like a dialect to just say, OK, you know what? Just connect the memory using this interface to a model. And then we could, use, you could, we could do clock cycles and things like that transparently. That would be really nice. I cannot stress enough that this does not exist yet, but it would be it would really be great. And now, for a completely over-the-top demo, I'm going to show you how I run um, RISC -V, uh, RISC V six-stage pipeline full core using Arculator on. Don't worry, Arculator on. It's going to be all right. And now for the demo. So this is uh, the core I'm going to run. So it's a big thing, really, really large. Um, and here is the simulation. So first of all, here's the little thing. This is the memory interface. So it's a, it's a function that will take the, an instance of the, uh, of the chip and uh, a memory buffer. And uh, so it's a li little bit large, unfortunately, because we do not have the, sorry, maybe I should probably make it bigger. Um, it's it's a, a bit unfortunate we don't have the, uh, the dialect I was talking about, but all right, we implement it once and we don't care about it. So, here for the actual simulation. <laughs> so we set up the constants here that we're going to need. We set up a, a memory buffer for the memory, the, the, the RAM attached to the, to the chip. And here we are. So here this is the program I'm going to run. It's a RISC-V program. Bas basically what it does is it takes two value from memory and it just uh, adds them together. So this is the program. I load it into memory and then I load the value 40 and 2. And we're going to try to add them. So the simulation, we instantiate one instance of the chip here. Um, and then we have the, the actual loop, the initialization loop, because the chip needs a few cycles to get ready. And that's fine. And then finally, we do the actual loop, which we, in which we update the inputs for the memory uh, on each loop. And we just update the clock. Uh, and we get the ALU outputs once it's done. And so if I concatenate, so we have the rockets.mlir that contains the chip and the sim.mlir that contains the simulation. And we pipe it to Arculator Run. Oops. <laughs> yes, of course, it has to be. Uh, oh, no, it's a typo. My bad. It's a big model. It needs a few seconds to compile. And there we go. We have the outputs. This is the sum of 40 and 2. I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.